hundreds of emails. What can I do now? Right? Don't show me mice, show me what I can do. And these, this is um, a, a cheat sheet. There's more of it in the book, page 304. And I'm going to go into each of these uh, in detail in a second. But the summary is, our three meals a day, that's, that's craziness. I really don't think we were, we've evolved to eat three, three full meals a day. Certainly not when we're over the age of, say, 30. Um, so I've started to, I've always skipped breakfast. I'm starting to skip lunch when I can, and I'm not too stressed. Um, so that, that sounds pretty brutal, right? But if you drink coffee, tea is fine. You can actually be hungry and it's, it's not so bad. Um, so lose your breath. You want to get on a treadmill or walk up some stairs. Um, just move. Get a standing desk. Our lifestyles today are just atrocious for particularly this region, right? We're atrophying around here. I know what you're thinking. No, our muscles, our muscles are atrophy. Most human beings these days in Western, in the Western world, in the developed world, we, we have, we end up cramping up here. Our muscles are pathetic. It's, it's amazing we can even stand upright after sitting for so long. So there are exercises that, that, that I do that, I, that I'll highly recommend. Because every 19 minutes, someone in America will fall over and die from it. And mostly the elderly, of course. But if, if you've got the strength in your hips, and the flexibility, uh, you're more, less likely to, to die from a fall. Um, and so the, the kind of exercises I, I do are, I focus on our hip hinge exercises. I'll talk, talk about that in a second. Uh, I think we need feedback because everyone gives up on diets if they don't see it working or they don't know if it's working. Same with supplements, same with sleep. So what I'm recommending and what I do with my life is that I, I look for feedback. You can't change what you don't measure, basically. And so for over 12 years now, I've been measuring various aspects of my life. It used to be crazy to measure yourself with blood tests and, and other things. Um, you know, people would say, David, you're too worried about stuff. But actually, we now live in a world where it's very easy to monitor things. But I've learned a lot of things that I didn't realize. And I've also become much more aware of what I stick in my mouth. You know, like most of us, I would just shove stuff in my mouth and forget about it. My, this was a trash can. But if you see it on your phone, you know, then, then you're thinking about what's going in. And that, that alone is fantastic. It makes you much more cognizant about what you eat and, as I mentioned, what you, what you do for sleep. People who, who follow these type of recommendations uh, live an average of 14 years longer than those who don't. We got through sleep. And this is be, be content. Um, I, I think being uh, meditative is good. My, my rule in life is don't lie because it's just too stressful. You just got to live life being happy with who you are. So I think that's the, th those are the things. Hormesis is what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Unfortunately, we do have to push our bodies or they become complacent. And what we've learned through my lab's research and others is that these longevity genes, these sirtuins, they're only activated, hyperactivated, when your body thinks that it's gonna die. It doesn't mean you have to go to the brink of death, but you do need to get out of the chair. You do need to be hungry. You do need to sometimes have fewer pro amounts of protein because that's what switches on these defensive genes. Okay. And it's worse if you become obese and it's worse as you get older. Their activity goes down and down and down until basically you're at the whim of entropy Second law of thermodynamics, you're toast. But we can turn on our body's natural defenses. And the way to do that is, is basically give yourself a little bit of adversity that may feel uncomfortable. Sure, being out of breath is not great. Being cold and in a sauna, not that comfortable. But what it does is it triggers these defensive responses. If you go too much, of course, if you freeze or you burn or you starve, you're not going to live longer, but a little bit goes a long way. And we know this from many studies, even plants respond to hormesis. You spray herbicide on a plant a little bit and it will grow better because it turns on these defenses. And we didn't know these defenses existed until just uh, um, about 20 years ago. So I'll, I'll get to the antioxidants because 
Oh, that's an important point. Uh -huh. Well, calorie restriction, which is the, the old term for, uh, for intermittent fasting, is known to actually speed up metabolism. It's act, it actually, what happens is your body goes into this defensive state when it's really hungry, particularly for prolonged periods of hunger, maybe not missing a snack, but for a day or two. What happens is the body starts to burn energy, so it'll deplete the fat, and it'll rev up your uh, mitochondria. So mitochondria, the battery packs, the power packs of the cell, animals that are hungry have more of those than less. So actually, you burn more when you're hungry. It's, it's interesting, we always thought you became tired and lethargic, it's not true. And what we think is going on is that the body thinks that it's under threat and it gives you more energy to survive. So that's repair your body, have more energy to go find food, run away from a saber-toothed tiger that might be attacking you, right? But unfortunately, modern life, all of the, you know, the companies whose job is to to make us feel better, have done a great job of making us feel better. We feel great at the expense of our longevity. The things I told you are my, my best estimate based on the science and personal experience and epidemiological. But the question is, if you exercise a lot, do you then take the supplement? Or should you be hungry on the days you don't exercise? We don't know the combinations yet, so we have to figure that out. It's complex. We're just at the point of understanding what works, but not necessarily in combination. All right, so this is where things get scientific and where I bring in the free radical stuff. These are the three main defenses that you can turn on in your body to live longer. The sirtuins are the ones that we work on, and they require a molecule called NAD to work. Those enzymes, um, there are seven I mentioned in the body. So you can turn them on a few ways. You can raise your NAD levels, by exercising, being hungry, um, or taking molecules that raise NAD. The one that I'm taking, page 304, is called NMN, not to be confused with M&Ms. Do not. <laughs> well, you can eat M&Ms, you just won't live longer. Uh, MIB-66 is a drug that we're developing for diseases such as um, frailty. There are what are called the accelerators. Um, these are the fuel, these are the accelerators. Uh, we call these SIRT2 and activating compounds. Whereas Veritrol, the red wine molecule, is a SIRT1 activator. So that's why when we gave this molecule to mice, they were resistant to obesity because the, the mice, the bodies of the mice, thought that they were hungry, thought that they were exercised, but they weren't. We just tricked them using the red wine molecule. But we've made some much better molecules. We've actually made 14,000 versions since Resveratrol. One of these has gone into humans and actually was uh, in a small group of people effective in psoriasis, which is in an inflammatory skin condition. So, you know, we've come a long way. We know if we feed these molecules to mice, they live longer. Um, this one even um, works on mice, the synthetic one. So that's the sirtuins. Again, exercise, being hungry will turn these on. NAD boosters will turn them on. AMPK, that's the middle leg to the stool. This is the one that metformin will activate. Metformin is a drug for type 2 diabetes. It's probably used by oh, at least 50 million people around the world, probably more. It's relatively safe as drugs go. The worst complaint typically is an upset stomach, which you can usually mitigate with food or a coated pill. And it turns on this pathway, which is combining with the sirtuins. These are talking to each other. This evolved to sense the levels of energy in the body. And when you didn't have enough energy in the body, let's say you were really hungry, it would turn on. So these are protective pathways. The last one, the third major one, is called mTOR, which was discovered by David Sabatini at MIT. And it senses how much protein you're taking in. And when you have low amounts of protein, it will defend your body because it thinks that you're running out of food. So these are all hormesis sensors. Bad stuff's happening. These genes get turned on and they protect you from disease and aging. So what do you want to do? You want to not overload yourself with a ton of protein. So carnivores, I'm sorry, it doesn't, it's not backed up by the data because you're not going to invoke this guy here, mTOR. It doesn't mean you, you have to avoid meat completely, 
but it does mean that I think constantly eating meat isn't the right thing to do. Um, besides, what I like about eating vegetables is you, you can eat a lot more of them, so you're not hungry. Uh, this one, uh, you can activate by actually not eating as much food regularly, eat less often, you've got less glucose, as you can tell, I'm monitoring that. And then this one, exercise, also being hungry, and you can boost your NAD with a pill. Now, do we know this is all gonna make us live 30 years longer? No, that's why I showed you the slide, that you know we don't know if this is true or not. But it's, it's been basically done in, in hundreds of labs, there's thousands of scientific papers, and it's all we've got right now. You know, those of us who were born in the 20th century, it wasn't our fault. You know, probably be better to be born now if you wanted the best of medicine, but we have to go with what we've got. And this is the best we've got right now based on all the science that we've got.